It is Indiana in the Morning, presented as always by First Commonwealth Bank here in the voice of Indiana County, WCCS AM 1160, 101.1 FM. And I'll tell you this as we head into this interview. Of all the books I've read, and you know, dear listeners, uh, how many I read and we bring you the author interviews, the book Out of the Clouds, best book I've read this year. Best book I've read this year, Out of the Clouds, The Unlikely Horseman and the Unwanted Cult Who Conquered the Sport of Kings. Linda Carroll and David Rossner are the authors, and Linda Carroll's on the line with us. Linda, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And especially after reading this book, this is literally one of those ones that's really hard to put down. I mean, you get into so much of the story of Stymie and Hirsch Jacobs, her trainer, or his trainer. Um, you have so much before we ever meet Stymie that it's just an amazing book from cover to cover. Congratulations on the writing. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, um, you write your your stories and then you just uh, put them out there. And even if you like them and you're compelled by the topic, you're never absolutely sure that the entire rest of the world will be. I'm just fascinated by the story of how it is that you came to write this book. Could you tell our listeners about that? Well, actually, this book grew out of a previous book, um, the last book that we wrote was about Affirmed and Aligar's quest for the Triple Crown. And the owner of Affirmed was um, a daughter of Hirsch Jacobs, uh-huh. uh, Patrice Wolfson. And we, you know, when we were reporting that book, we came across all this stuff about her dad. And her dad sounded so interesting. But if you're writing about Affirmed and Aligar, you can only cram so much into the story of Affirmed and Aladar about a character who really isn't doing anything in the book. So we just kind of put a little bit in there and we pushed it off to the side and then the opportunity came up and we were like, you know, maybe it's time to write the other book. And because of that and because we'd written the other, uh, the Affirmed and Aladar book, we had a connection with the Jacobs family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without them, it would have, you know, it would have, we would have had a skeleton without a heart. You know, they yeah. they just so informed the emotional part of the book and, and gave us so much more of a sense of who Hirsch Jacobs was. Hirsch Jacobs is such a fascinating character, but we meet so many. Uh, not only him, Isidore Bieber, who was his partner in all of this and is so completely opposite of a personality of Hirsch Jacobs. Damon Runyon plays a key role in this whole story, and uh, it's just a just a rollicking good read. But Hirsch Jacobs uh, was was not a man well respected within the racing industry for most of his career, was he? No, he wasn't, and you know that's it's a class thing. You know, he's you know he's the underdog. He came from uh, came from New York City, and he was the son of an immigrant sailor. And he really, in the beginning, would have never had any idea about training horses. He got into racing pigeons, and which was uh, a very big sport at that time and one of his uh, pals also was into horse racing and he brought Hirsch to the track and, and Hirsch was immediately smitten by the horses and and you know the same kind of connection he had with his birds and 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 pretty much all other animals just uh, sped him along in racing horses but but he was a big outsider yeah yeah, yeah, it really, really was, and uh, and and the book goes along so quickly. the The Runyon aspect of it, the Bieber aspect of it, is is just tremendous reading. And then we get to Stymie, the horse. We finally meet Stymie, and uh, you talk about a marriage made in heaven. This is a horse that not many people think very highly of, but Hirsch Jacobs had an eye, didn't he? And he could see something yeah. in this horse that no one else could. Well, and, and he just had an instinct. He had some kind of connection with the horses that, um, you know, it, it helps me that I have horses and I train horses and I've seen a lot of different horse personalities. So I, I sort of understood one of the things that compelled Hirsch Jacobs for me was the way he kind of talked to horses without talking to the horses. Mm-hmm. You know, he, you know, one of, one of the things I would tell people is that if you think horses don't talk, it's only because you're not listening, you know, yeah. and, and he, he knew how to listen to the horses and, you know, maybe he'd be staring at a horse trying to figure out what was wrong with the horse. 
And it wouldn't come to him necessarily right away, but maybe a couple hours later he'd think, oh, I know what's wrong with that horse, and he'd fix it. And, you know, that is a special talent. And he meets Stymie, and it takes him a little bit longer to figure him out, but eventually he does. Uh, the relationship between the two of them uh, is is just fascinating to watch unfold. And uh, Stymie has as much a, of a personality as anybody else in this book. He's an incredible horse uh, who comes from uh, really a, a, not a, a very prestigious background, uh, uh, but yet he has a bloodline that Hearst Jacobs realizes uh, might mean that he's something special, and he turns out to be. Right. Well, he's, part of it's that, you know, he's got some good bloodlines in his pedigree, but they're not really close to him, you know, grandparents, great-grandparents. Uh, but they're in there. They're in the mix. Um, but there's just something about the horse that, you know, he's, he's put together so well. Hearst Jacobs sees him and just says, you know, I, I don't really understand why this horse isn't doing well. You know, a horse that's built like that ought to be a star. And so he goes about trying to figure out the horse. And the horse, you know, he's kind of a difficult person. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's got, he, he, he likes to have things his own way. And a lot of trainers want, want the horses to do what they want. And they're not open to the idea, well, maybe I should let the horse do what the horse wants within, within limits. And Hearst Jacobs is, is set about to kind of learn the horse. You know, each race, he takes something from the race. If, even if the horse doesn't do well, he learns something about the horse that will make it uh, so the horse does better the next time he runs him. You we, know, until, he, until he completely understands the horse and realizes this horse loves to drop way in the back, kind of like Zenyatta of modern modern day race horses mm-hmm. likes to drop back and then you know towards the end of the race you know when it's a, when it's a real challenge <laughs> then yeah. he likes to power past everybody the amazing thing about the book to me is um well one of the amazing aspects is the way that you write the races themselves the one brooklyn handicap uh, i thought that writing there was as solid a race description as you ever find the, the signature race for Stymie is the International Gold Cup race in which he's an underdog, and uh, he comes away with a victory there. And, and just let me congratulate you. What a piece of writing that is as you follow uh, help us to, to go along through the racing seasons. We should explain to people this is post-World War II, just post-World War II, and Stymie has captured the imagination of the nation, really. And these race descriptions are just wonderful. Well, good, because I, you know, I, sometimes I, I read books and I'm, I'm amazed at how well they, they describe the races. And then there's other ones I feel like that must have been a great race, <laughs> but, but I can't tell. And, you know, we were hoping that we would describe it in such a way that people would be excited and there would be some suspense. You know, if you don't know how a particular race turned out, and certainly in Stiney's case, most people don't know how the, how the race has turned out, then you can write it so it's suspenseful. You know, in the International Gold Cup, it was suspenseful for everybody because, you know, it it just, until like the last few feet, nobody really knew what was going to happen. He's going up against the, the top racehorses of the day, triple crown winners. Uh, there are two particular horses, uh, Assault and Armed, uh, that he must battle, and he does so through, really through his career, just a tremendous series of races. He loses some he wins some, and he captures the fancy of an entire nation. Uh, and the times in which this is all happening, uh, that plays a role in what we're reading about as well. The book is called Out of the Clouds, The Unlikely Horseman and the Awanta Cold Who Conquered the Sport of Kings. Linda Carroll and David Rossner are the authors. Linda, as you have, uh, the book has hit the streets, and folks have been able to read it and catch on to it. Uh, what has been some of the reaction that you're hearing? Some, you know, some people seem to really, really like it. You know, I mean, there, there are the people who, who want the horse to show up sooner in the, in the story. <laughs> you know, the, the people who only read it, want to read about the horse, you know, they don't want to read about this really compelling guy who made the horse what he became. But I think the horse shows up at exactly the right spot. You know, he's, he shows up at a point in Hearst Jacobs' career where a turning point. You know, where Hearst Jacobs has been a winning trainer, but with only second-class horses. And everybody says, you know, if, if, this guy had a, if this guy had a real great stakes-winning horse, he wouldn't know what to do with it. 
you know, and all he can do is run those second-rate horses. And he got stymie, and then everything turned around because the, he made this horse great, and and you couldn't really take anything away from Hirsch Jacobs at that point. Stymie's timing was always perfect in racing, and it is in this book, too, in my opinion. Uh, he appears at just the right time. It's called Out of the Clouds, the Unlikely Horseman and the Unwanted Colt Who Conquered the Sport of Kings. Linda Carroll, thank you so much for spending some time with us here in Indiana in the morning. Oh, thank you. I'm always happy to talk horses. <laughs> <laughs> horses, horse people, you name it. Yeah, and when so you it's get... All, it's a lot of fun. When you get a, get, get a horse like this to talk about, you could go on and on and on, I'm sure. Thanks again. Have a wonderful yep. day. Thank you, too.